morning, everybody. Day number three of 366, uh, long journey. So my name is Alan Thomas, and I am coming to you in Rethink Dieting for Men. And you guys are in this group, obviously, but um, I do this for a, for a lot of reasons. And I'm going to talk to you about something that um, really impacted me yesterday that really got me thinking. And, and it's really why I do what I do. You know, when when I lost 129 pounds in 260 days, I did it because for a lot of reasons. Obviously, the most obvious was I was morbidly obese, and and I always tell my story on this because I never know who's on this um, on this you know call, and I don't know who's seen you know seen my story. So if you've heard it before, just tune me out for a little while. But um, you know. My story is this. In 2017, at age 55, I reached 304 pounds. I'm 5'11", father of four, a wife. Um, I've been married now almost 35 years, but 31 years at the time. And my, um, you know, when I stepped on the scales, I broke that 300-pound mark. And it was, it was really kind of a surreal moment where I looked down. It, it was early one morning, that morning, March 2nd, 2017. And I saw, when I saw that 300 pop up, I'm like, oh my God. And at the time I had been in the um, burial life insurance business to um, the senior market, which is, is people predominantly over age 65. And, and as I stood there, I could not remember ever meeting one man that was over a hundred pounds overweight that made it to 65. In fact, I thought about it later. I think I only met one person, one man, uh, women tend to live longer, but one man uh, that made it to 61. So in my mind, I had very short time to live. Um, even though I didn't have any real medical issues, nothing big, uh, you know, I wasn't no heart problems, no type two diabetes, all those things that are associated with obesity. Uh, you know, I didn't have yet, but but I knew it was coming and I knew my time was was short. And I started to think about things like, you know, I was going to be known as that first husband, you know, to my wife. My wife and I've been married 31 years, as I said earlier. And, you know, she would likely a beautiful woman. She'd likely be, you know, sought highly sought after after I was dead, after a appropriate amount of time. Some some guy to remarry her and he'd be sleeping in my bed. You know, my, you know, daughter would call her, call that, that man, father, dad, you know, my, my sons, my three sons would call him dad. And then, you know, he would get all the things that I had worked for. And because I couldn't put down the fork and it was, it was just one of those moments. I snapped a picture of that scale because it was such a weird time. I had my camera nearby and yeah, I mean, my, my phone, you know, which is camera and I just, just some made me snap a picture of it. I don't even know why and it wasn't planned, but, um, you know, without boring you with the long story, 260 days, I reached 175 pounds and I did it publicly and, and I did it, you know, to gain my life back. And, you know, now I, I work with men who, um, and my wife and I actually work with some ladies too. We're, we've got a beta program going for ladies, but, but I work with men who struggle with obesity and, you know, people always, you know, the first thing they're thinking is diet and exercise and all this. And do you have to do that? Sure. Sure you do. Absolutely. But I never tell anybody what to eat because it's never, it was never my problem. And I, I can't, I'm not for everybody. And, and I, you know, and I think about that journey, it was the question that really got asked of me shortly after I had that skill and what was holding me back. And, and it was my weight, but the, the real question that get, didn't get asked, but I ask every man, what's it holding you back from? And, and I knew that this purpose that was inside of me was, was going to go, go away. And, um, and it would just be lost because I, again, I couldn't put down the fork. And so when I work with men, you know, it's, it's never about what to eat guys. It's just not, I mean, I, I mean, people say, well, how can you say that? You've got to change what you, of course you do, but it's never the core issue. You know, the guys I work with are dropping pounds like crazy. And, and it's, you know, it, it's become so much bigger than just ourself. When you really look at the magnitude of it, you know, let's, let's face it. And, and, if I were, if, if Satan was really crafty, okay, and, and I, you know, I'm a, I'm a believer, I'm, I'm a Jesus follower, and so I don't, if you're not, I, you know, that's, 
that's okay, you, you know, but, but I am, so I'm going to speak in those terms. So I hope it doesn't offend you if it does, if it does. But, um, you know, if, if Satan was really crafty, how, how crafty would it be to, um, to take men out one by one? There's 40 million obese men in the United States of America right now. One by one, by something as benign as an extra bite of food, you know, something that's good that God made that was good for us, you know, but extra bite. And then what if he were to get these men caught up in the circle of insanity of chasing, chasing diet after diet and think that there was this magical pill that was going to make them thin all of a sudden. And then they would spend years, if not decades, chasing that. And instead of chasing their dream of what they were created for. And so, you know, what, what I want you to think about with this weight thing, it, it was a lot like something that actually happened to me yesterday with my, with my daughter. Um, and I won't go into the details of it, but I was really concerned for my daughter's safety. She's 19 years old. She's my baby girl. She's still, she's still five years old to me in my, in my, my head. I have this picture of her when she's like 10. I said, you'll be that age forever to me. So and dads of daughters, you know what I'm talking about. But I was concerned for her safety. It wasn't like a big deal that I need to go out. But this thought ran out through my head. I said, what if she is in trouble? I couldn't get a hold of her. What if she is in trouble? And I don't go, but I, but we could tell where she was. So so I got in my car and rode out there. Well, everything was fine. I didn't even get there before make contact with her. But but I was concerned about her because wouldn't it, if something had happened to her and wouldn't it be I mean, I wouldn't be able to live with myself if I knew that I could have done more and I didn't. So I got, I got my butt in my car. My schedule was packed. I had people that I, you know, a ton of stuff that I need to do, but going to, going to make sure she was okay was way more important than anything I had to do. And it wasn't so I could feel good about myself. It was so I could take care of my daughter. But, you know, but I want you to think about this too. What if you could do more? You know, as much as we don't like to admit it in this, in the society of political correctness and all that, and I'm not going to get into discussion about any of that, but the one thing that that's a fact, you, you can control people's outward, you know, outward um, things can be controlled, but how somebody thinks is very difficult. They have to control that. And every man that I've ever talked to who's obese, when they get down to it, they realize that there are people that, that watch them, there's people that, um, you know, they've been in situations um, with where they're, you know, where they've probably been discriminated against because of their obesity. And I, I use that word uh, because I don't, I can't think of another term, but, you know, you go into a, to a setting where you're up for promotion and, and the thin guy gets the job and he's not as qualified as you, but they don't say that's the reason, but, hmm. You didn't get it. And, or, you know, somebody, um, you, somebody gets continually picked over you and in your whole, what you're about, you, they don't won't even listen to you or, or you've got a message you want to bring to somebody and they just won't listen because, because when they're looking at you, they see somebody who's undisciplined. They see somebody who can't get control of their, of their food intake. They can't get control of their own body. How could they possibly have anything to say that's worthwhile? And, and a lot of thin people think this way. I mean, I was on the phone with a, a, a coach who is, he's not a weight loss coach, he's an incredible individual, you know, yesterday. And, and he said he sees a lot of fat people as invisible. Now, this is a guy who's a loving, kind guy who really, you know, one of my closest friends, but, but he said that to me and I went, wow, that's, that's incredible because when you're fat, you don't see it. When you're 304 pounds like I did, I didn't see this. I, I knew that there was, you know, I was ashamed of how I looked. I, I thought I could cover it up with, you know, dark colored clothes, always black, you know, all these things. And, and I still like dark colors, but, but the, the reality is people would see, he sees people as invisible. He just didn't take them as seriously. And, and I said, wow, that, that's in, and he just was honest with me. And, and I say this to you guys, you know, this whole thing of weight, it, it, it just seems so 
trivial because, you know, so many people are fat and it's like, no big deal. Don't worry about it. But, but I want you to realize this. You, you have, you may have something inside you that needs to get out to, to other people, some purpose. And I believe you do. I, I believe if you're breathing, God's not done with you. Okay. So if you're watching this, you're breathing, but, but you may have this purpose that it, that is so important for you to get out that this one man needs to hear, or this one family needs to hear that's going to absolutely radically change their life, but they won't listen until you're a certain weight. They won't listen to your 200 pounds or 220. You're, you're 300 pounds now, you're 275 now, whatever. Or, you're, or you, this promotion that you would get if you got down to this weight. But it's not the promotion you're going to get. It's the impact you're going to have on the people's lives that you're going to be in charge of now. But you won't get it unless you're at that weight. And so there's going to be people that it costs a lot for you not to get that your message out. What's inside of you? I don't know what that is. But I believe there's a vein of gold running through all of us. And but as as men that are that struggle with obesity, don't trivialize this. This is this is really, really, really important stuff. There's there's somebody out there waiting on you. There's somebody out there right now praying for you, praying for you for something that you've got inside of you that you could serve them with. And I don't know what that looks like. I mean, I don't know what it looks like. I don't know what it is. But because you're 150 pounds overweight or 75 pounds overweight or 50 pounds overweight or 250 pounds overweight, I don't know the number. They're not going to listen. They're going to see you as invisible. They're not going to have. They're, they're not going to they're going to miss the gold that you've got because you couldn't put down the fork. And this is what I do, what I do for. It's not so you look good in skinny jeans. I want you to look good in skinny jeans and I want you to get on the airline and I have to put on the stinking double seat belt. And all that's all that crap that fat guys struggle with, that morbidly obese men struggle with, just like I did. But I want you to I want you to have a chance to have an impact that you'll never have. You will never have it at your weight. You might have an impact but somebody's going to miss, miss it because you couldn't put down the fork. And I know how hard it is. God knows. I know how grueling it is to, to do diet after diet and, and, and fail at it and to, you know, go to the gym to get laughed at and to, you know, people into being a million situations that you wish you couldn't be. And you just don't think it's possible, but I'm going to tell you it is possible. <laughs> it is possible. I've got a, I've got one, you know, last night I was talking to one of, one of my guys who's been with me about 50 days and he's about to see the three hundreds. He hasn't, he hasn't been in the three hundreds. He said he couldn't remember when he's in the four hundreds right now. And some of you say that, well, how did he get that big one pound at a time? Just like you will, if you don't change, if you're not already there. And he's, well, he walked 10,000 steps yesterday. He couldn't walk to his mailbox without assistance. I never told him what to eat. We worked on the area between his ears. That's all we worked on. That's all we worked on. So if you're chasing a diet, man, I can't help you. Well, I can't go to Google, G-O-O-G-L-E, search diet, and you'll find a few. But if you want to change the world, then reach out to me. I don't have all the answers, I, but I've got some. We'll spend 45 minutes to an hour and have an honest conversation and see if we can get you unstuck. You may be looking for some help like the guys that I had. I, of course, I do that as well. But but if you want to if you want to change your diet. You know, I, I'm not your guy. <laughs> I'm just not. And, uh, you know, do you have to change what you eat? Looks like, yes, you got to change what you eat, of course. But it's never about that. So I think about my daughter. What if something had happened and I could have done more? What if there's people waiting on you right now? And there are waiting on you to be fit, waiting on you to be, be this, this big man you were created to be. What if you could have done more and, and they miss it and the ripple effect goes forever. So guys take this seriously. 
it's not it's not about a 32 inch waist and six pack abs. You can have that, but it's much it's much much bigger. So if you want to have an honest conversation, if you're stuck, go to transformmyfuture.com forward slash apply. Uh, you'll get uh, you'll come to my calendar, pick a spot on the calendar. Um, if you don't see one, email me at alan at transformmyfuture.com. You know, I'll figure out a time. This is important because there's people waiting on all of us. And, um, you know, go to that calendar. There's a short questionnaire that you need to fill out uh, at the end of the, um, that take time to fill that out. That helps me prepare for the call. I'll take the call personally. Um, but, but guys, this, this is big stuff. This is not just about your waistline, but you got to get that in check too. It's part of the journey. So I'll see you guys tomorrow and, you know, post something. If this video spoke to you, let me hear from you and, you know, keep on pressing post as you press, as you press forward, as they say.